Hello and welcome to Year 9 Pupils and any parents that are listening in as well. My name is Mr Devereaux and you can see my contact details on screen. I take responsibility for the Year 9 options process and this presentation will not only give you a bit of an overview of the key stage 4 curriculum and what students will be studying across years 10 and year 11, but also give you a bit more help and advice on the options process and hopefully giving a bit more clarity on what it is students need to be thinking about and doing when making those all important subject choices. Whenever we experience some form of change, be it in our own personal lives or in the world of education, it always brings a little bit of worry and sometimes anxiety. And that's the same probably for the year nine options process. Things are going to change. You are going to be, going to be studying GCSEs, but you're also going to be potentially studying new subjects as well. And the point of these presentations and the PSHCE module and subject evening is to really help minimise the worry and anxiety and hopefully turn that into a sense of opportunity and excitement. Really, this is the very first chance that pupils have had to make real decisions about what they want to study. And I think, I think it's that that should really allow students to feel quite confident, empowered and excited about the future. But as always, please do get in touch if you have any questions. Pupils, you know how to use Teams, you know how to use chat, use that. Communicate with me, your tutors, your head of learning. We'll all be on hand to help answer any questions or queries that you may have. But parents also, you can see my contact details on screen. If you do have any questions, please do get in touch. But also alongside listening in and looking at the information in this presentation, you must look at the options booklet. The links to that have been sent out to both students and will be sent to parents as well. It's important to read through the information from Ms. Rockall and Mrs. Rodriguez and then look at the help and advice section and then read through the information that each head of department has written about their subject. That's important because without that information, you're not going to really be able to make the best choices that you can possibly make. So I hope you find this presentation helpful and useful and hopefully by the end of it, you will be really confident about making those all important next step choices. So thank you and enjoy. You will now see on screen a statement that was given by Ofsted during their last inspection of the school. Now I know that was a while ago now, but it still gives us confidence that the curriculum we provide is not only fit for purpose, but most importantly suits the needs of our own learners. Obviously we refine and change our curriculum each year, but the principles that you can read now still remain the same. We provide a curriculum that will allow you to learn and develop. It will create many opportunities both inside and outside the classroom, but most importantly it will allow you to build confidence, it will allow you to achieve, to celebrate success and hopefully as well allow you to enjoy the next two years of your education. And with all of that in mind, it will set you up perfectly for the next phase of your education. You will hopefully have the skills and the confidence to tackle any of the challenges that you will face in the future. So what does this actually look like for GCSEs 
in year 10 and then year 11. Well, really, the curriculum, I suppose, is split into three components. Core, then optional or choice subjects, and non-examined elements that really do underpin everything we do as a school. And more about those will be explained on the next slide. So almost all pupils will be studying for 10 GCSEs. The first set of subjects, as I said, are known as the core subjects. Some people call them compulsory subjects, the English, math, science, and a modern foreign language. And then the next group of subjects called choice or optional subjects will be one humanity, but you can certainly study both. And then these two open choices, choice one and choice two subjects that you choose from a list of subjects that will be given to you on the in the options booklet and you'll see on the next few slides. One question I often get is why can't we do more GCSEs? To put simply 10 is absolutely enough. It's enough to give you a broad and balanced curriculum with an element of free choice but it certainly is not too many. So when you come to exams, you're not feeling overwhelmed. And it gives you, during the school day and weeks, it gives you time to really focus on those subjects and have the adequate amount of lesson time and teacher contact. So that's why it's 10. It gives a good balance but it gives you a chance to really study in detail without being overwhelmed. I talked about some subjects which are not GCSEs that are not necessarily examined and these sit within our, our curriculum. There's obviously physical education that is a time that are timetabled lessons, core PE sometimes it's referred to. But there's also going to be ICT developed via our subject areas. Throughout the next two years, there is careers learning, business and enterprise opportunities that are either built into lessons or done as drop down mornings, afternoons or days. And alongside that, through our tutor program and our PSHCE program, extra elements are, are built into the curriculum and of course religious studies even if not taken as a GCSE will still be part of the curriculum offer. I just wanted to highlight a couple of changes that have been introduced to our curriculum over the last couple of years. It may just be a familiar reminder or it actually may be something new to you and it's just worth pointing these few things out, but also trying to explain why, either on this current slide or you'll see it over the next few slides. The first change that you will see is that modern foreign language has become a compulsory element, and this will be pretty much for almost all students. There will be, however, a few students where the decision is made for them that studying a language may not be the best outcome for them. This is based on information that the teachers of either French or Spanish have, but it's also in discussion with your head of learning, your form tutor, and also we'll bring in uh, the head of English and maths to help make an informed decision. So for those students that it may not be suitable, and we are talking about just a few, they have, will have the opportunity either to do one fewer GCSE subject or they will be able to choose an additional choice subject. But for most, if you're not doing a foreign language, then you will have to go into a study group. As mentioned, you must study either a history or geography, but you can still do both. You can pick one here and then choose the other subject in one of your other options. And religious studies, RS, as most of you refer to it, has become optional. It's a GCSE that you now pick and continue to study in years 10 and 11. However, if you choose not to study it, there will still be some elements of it that would appear uh, throughout years 10 
and 11 either through PSHCE, shooter time or even some drop down days. Now on this slide, you can clearly see some of the reasoning why we've changed our curriculum and asking you now to study a modern foreign language and a humanities subject. And if you just read through those couple of points, I'm hoping that you can see the benefits of studying these subjects. So this is the exciting bit. This is the first time really in your sort of school career that you've had a real choice in deciding what you can study. And this is a choice that you, the pupils, should be making. But it's a choice that needs to be carefully thought through and it needs to be considered. And it really does and should involve your parents or carers because their advice and guidance is important too. So it should be a, a shared decision, but ultimately, Year 9, it's, it's your choice of what you want to study. So, as I said, this is the exciting part, and now you have to try, start to narrow down your choices and start doing some decision making. One thing you will notice at Herschel, and this differs from many other schools, is that at this stage in the decision making process, there are no option blocks. You do not have to pick a certain subject from this block and that block. And therefore, you won't find that you've got any restrictions on the choices that you make. So if you're struggling to make some decisions, perhaps you've got too many choices or you just simply do, know, do not know what to, to do next year, then I want you to think about some of the following aspects. So it's really important to think about some of the following aspects, making sure your decision gives you a bit of balance, but it's certainly a giving you subjects that you know you're going to enjoy studying, working hard at and doing well in. It may also be certain subjects that give you access to A-levels or level three courses at six four more college. And it could even be that you're looking beyond that at degree level and working backwards to see if there are any specific GCSEs you need to study to make to allow you to study a six or more college, which then allow you to go on to study a, a degree level or an apprentice. We have lots of information and advice at hand for you to help you make those important choices. The first is talk to the, your current teachers. You will be having a subject evening with you, your parents and your subject staff, and they will talk through your current progress and your attitude to learning, but also they can talk about your suitability for courses at GCSE level. In addition to that, Mr. Abdar is our careers coordinator. He will be providing lots of help and advice and guidance through the careers channel and through the careers page of the website. And also, if you feel you would like a interview um, or a meeting with our careers advisor, he can organize that for you. So do get in touch with him. Your head of learning and your tutors have a wealth of experience and please go to them. A number of them have been through this process before and therefore can use their experience to help guide you. The options booklet has been written for pupils and parents in mind, so please do spend some time going through it. The website, as I've said, has lots of information and there on screen you can see the link. It's constantly updated. There's useful tools that you can also use to help look at uh, pathways, courses at A-level, degree level, and then work your way back. And whilst these students may not be easy to find or uh, easily accessible, if you are able to speak to some year 12 and year 13 students that have gone through the process at Herschel with us, 
then they can offer some advice. They can also talk about some of the subjects that they studied and how that's led on to, to A-levels here, here at Herschel. So there are a number of people available and along with all of that, there are members of the school leadership team as well who you, you or your parents can go to, including myself and my details were on the, the front of the slide and will be at the very end of, the, of this slideshow as well. So do get in touch if you're still struggling to make those decisions. So I do recommend you read through the pages of the, the GCSE option subjects. Get a feel of what they're about, what you're going to study, how you are examined, so you can make really good informed decisions. So is there anything else we should be thinking about at this stage? Well, I've already mentioned that you can choose both history and geography. Do you think carefully about subjects requiring specific skills or a certain level of skill in that particular subject? For instance, music, PE, may be expecting you to be playing an instrument at a certain grade or be participating in a certain sport at a particular level. So do look at the guidance booklet, but also you may need to speak to your teachers to just find out exactly if you're suitable. Do also bear in mind that you can only study the technology subject you are currently studying and your reserve subject is important. And when I talk about the uh, options form in a moment, you'll see how important that reserve subject is and therefore must be one you're willing and happy to study. OK, let's talk about the options form. So we're hoping now you've made your final decisions and you now need to submit them. It will be digital this year on Microsoft Forms and more about that on the next slide. Just a couple of key dates. The first thing, the form won't go live until the 3rd of February, but it must be completed by the 17th of March. That's an important deadline to stick to. Anyone submitted choices after the 17th of March will be marked as late and therefore that may affect you receiving your first and second preference subjects. It is not a first come first serve basis. You have until the 17th of March and so long as you complete your choices by then, everyone will get equal uh, preference. So there's no rush. And I also want you to think about the subject even that will be happening on the 8th of March. That's a really good opportunity to talk to your teachers about uh, options and GCSEs. So don't rush into submitting your form because the other thing to remember is this form Whilst it's digital, it's not editable. So you can't sort of get it back and change or log, log into something and change your, your decision. So I want you to, to sum, only submit it when you're ready to submit it. Don't make um, a hasty decision and then you're gonna have to come to me, I'm gonna have to find your form, delete it, and then resend you the link to, to complete another one. So I'd much rather you, you waited until you're really ready and then submit the form, making sure you do it by the 17th of March, please. So this is what the options form would normally look like when it's printed on paper. This will be turned into a Microsoft form, so you'll be completing this online. But I still want to talk to you very quickly about the process. You would get the form that would be sent to students or the parent and you would complete this together. You put your name and tutor group and then you'll see there will be a series of questions asking you what your preference one subject, preference two, preference three and reserve choice. And it will just be a simple set of uh, drop down boxes. In preference one, you will simply be choosing history or geography. Then we come on to preference two. This is your first choice option subject and you would have a list of subjects from art down to religious studies and you choose one. You then move on to preference three, which again will have a list of subjects from art to religious studies. So you then you choose another subject. And then finally your reserve choice, which is a subject again, you'd be willing and happy to study. Should you not be able to study uh, preference two or three subjects? This is very, very rare. We come on to use it, but please do put something in there. And then if I'm struggling to allocate you a preference free subject, 
then I will come back to you and say, are you still happy to do that reserve choice? And then you may just say yes, and then I move on and continue working through the options process. Then finally, you would just tick a box or put your name in a box to say that you're happy with this. And again, you would also tick a box to say your parents are happy. Obviously, we can't get digital signatures, but we can still say that you are happy and your parents are happy. And then you simply submit the form. You wouldn't need to put a date that will be going go on automatically. You just submit it and that's done. And then I will start to process them on the 20th of March. It happens. Sometimes people even make a mistake on their form and um, after they've submitted it, they realize they've made the mistake or they've just simply changed their mind. Well, the first thing is, is please get in touch with me. Let me know your thoughts and what you would like to change from and to. The sooner you do that, the easier it will be for me to reallocate you into the new subject that you would rather study. The longer you leave it, the harder it will be. So the message here is if you've changed your mind, that's fine. But please let me know and then I would normally request that comes from uh, your parent so parents please email me that change and then I can get back to you with the uh, actual confirmation that that change has been processed and gone through I'd rather be changing uh, in March April or even May than in September October or uh, time because by then you have studied your courses and really change is much more difficult to make and some courses will be full up so I would prefer you get it right first time but if not let me know ASAP so thank you for listening and really thinking hard about your choices that are open to you and the decisions that you'll be making over the the coming month Again, you can see my contact details on screen there. Should you have any questions or want to get in touch, please use those and also use Microsoft Teams as well for the, for the pupils listening. I hope it's been useful and best of luck with it all and look forward to receiving your options forms on the 17th of March. Thank you.